people who think Obama is the Antichrist, pay close attention to this. He is an Antichrist. And you're not wrong about some of the stuff you've been looking at. And I've got a whole book's worth of material I've written on the uh, first and third horsemen of the apocalypse. I did write a book on the second horseman. That's already been published. It was published in 2018. That's called North Korea, Iran, and the Coming World War. Behold a red horse. You will find the identity of the red horse, identities actually, but identity of the red horse and its rider in that book. That's on the second seal. Obama actually ties to the first seal. So we talked about, Janie, people conflating the king of the north or the Assyrian with the Antichrist, right? Right. They're actually about different individuals. People are looking at prophecy in scripture and they're tying it to Obama. And they're thinking that because they think they can tie it to Obama, and they're not doing it correctly in most cases. In some cases they are, and I'm going to come to that. They're tying it to Obama and they're saying, Obama has to be the Antichrist, right? So there are some major antichrists under the antichrist. And those other major antichrists are the first three horsemen of the apocalypse. And they ride in sequence. By the time you get to the fourth horseman, Charles, when he starts to ride, in other words, to actually fulfill the stuff under that fourth seal, all four horsemen are riding together. I'm telling you, Obama may be one of them, and I'm going to explain why that is in a moment. And I'm going to tell you, folks, the first horseman is not the antichrist. He's not the one who rules the world for three and a half years. He also is not the one who is over a treaty, you know, that's made with many and imposed or enforced that treaty of Daniel 9, 27. People think that that treaty, because it's imposed or enforced over that full seven years of the tribulation week, and it does cover the whole seven years, not just the great tribulation. So I've said, Charles gains control over that global government. It's, it's constituted, and then he controls it throughout the period of the great tribulation, the latter half of that seven years. What about the first three and a half years? What's he doing during that period, right? So yeah, good question. he is involved in that period. He is over the other antichrist in that period, as I show in my book, including through entities like the World Economic Forum, including through entities like the United Nations, actually, et cetera. Even though the global government's not constituted yet for that first three and a half years, it doesn't exist yet. But Charles is involved this entire time. Since the 1980s, Charles has been over the entire Middle East peace process, the false peace process from start to finish to this day. Even the quartet is under Charles. Right. And we did talk about that in the other interview. We did. So here's the point. Obama is not. And he's not involved, actually, with any of that. Charles is over those things. Charles will be the one who is involved in imposing that, enforcing it over the nations, not just Israel. The treaty is not made with Israel. This is another mistake that people make. It affects Israel, as I talked about in our prior interview, but it's made with many, la rabin. And I get into that word rabin, which is translated as many in more detail, and I share something nobody's ever heard before, to my knowledge in Christianity, from the Hebrew text of Daniel 9, 27. But people, if they were looking really closely at the Hebrew text, that verse would see some things. I shared one thing with you in our prior interview, about how the statue, the idol to Charles is actually described in the root words of that text of Daniel 9, 27, right? I talked about that. The evidence, the documentation for that, the Hebrew root words, root words et cetera, all addressed in the second edition of the Antichrist and Cup of Tea. There's something else in that verse I did not talk about, but I did share it in this presentation uh, on the Sunday I'm mentioning that's available on my YouTube channel, and that's this. The word translated rabim, which is translated as many, and also ties to Yitzhak Rabin, which I, docu I documented in the first edition of the Antichrist and Kapiti. I did not mention that in, the, in our interview. I did document it even in the first edition of the Antichrist and Kapiti, meaning Yitzhak Rabin was associated with this treaty that's to come to pass in relation to Israel, per that verse, even though the treaty itself isn't really about Israel, it's about enforcing and imposing something on many, meaning all the nations of the world, essentially. Many entities, if you will, are parties in the world, which would be nations and world leaders. But the word translated many isn't only about uh, Yitzhak Rabin or about the literal word many. It has as its root word rob or rob. And that word can be translated arrow. And as Rabin, it can be translated arrows, plural. So here's the thing I pointed out this recent Sunday. 
The rider of the white horse has a bow. We're told he's carrying a bow under the description of the first seal in Revelation 6, verses 1 to 2. He's given a crown, and the particular type of crown in Greek is a Stephanus. It's a victor's crown. It's the same sort of crown that you'd see put on the head of a victor in a Roman or Greek game. Historically, it's like a wreath of leaves. It's that kind of a crown. It's also uh, a crown like the crown of thorns that was put on Christ's head. That's another thing that ties into historicism and preterism I won't go into in this interview, but it is talked about in the Messiah history in the tribulation period multi-volume series when that's published. The idea that some people believe Daniel 9.27 is actually about Christ and his crucifixion. Okay, I only mention it here because I'm talking about the fact that that Stephanus under the first seal also can be a crown of thorns. All right. You'll understand why I'm going there in a moment. But so there's a Stephanus, either a Greek type of wreath or crown of thorns, or the ki kind of crown that they would symbolically give with a Nobel Peace Prize. Also, that kind of a crown. Oh, oh, oh. All right. So then there's so the who, bow. who was given that Nobel Peace yeah, Prize. I'm coming to that. Yeah. I'm coming <laughs> to that. Then there's then there's the bow that this writer has, right? But he doesn't have arrows. Think about that. He's, we're told he's got a bow. People assume he's got arrows, but the verse doesn't say that. He's got a bow. The person who's involved with imposing or enforcing that treaty at the same time, in other words, when that writer goes forth and begins to do his thing under the first seal, the tribulation week begins. At that point, we may know who he is in advance. And in fact, we do know who all of them are in advance. As I've known who the foretold Antichrist is since 1987, decades before, He's going to ride as the fourth horseman. He's not riding as the fourth horseman yet. That's still to come, okay? Decades before he receives the mortal wound and recovers in a, in a seemingly supernatural or bizarre way that the world starts to follow after and worship him. Decades before he's possessed by the devil and in control of a global government, right? I've known who he is the whole time. And I've been telling people the whole time. The same thing is true of the other horsemen. I well, know wait a minute. You said, he, that you said he had a mortal uh, wound decades ago. He will. No, will. No. I knew who he was decades before right. he's received that Before that he happens. Hasn't it hasn't happened yet. Right. In other words, the Antichrist has been identified and the wound hasn't happened yet. It's coming. I'm saying ahead of time, it's going to be him who receives it or one of the heads, plural, on his heraldic achievement. Actually, if we're going to be very technically literal, scripture says it's one of the heads, plural, of that first beast that receives the mortal wound. You wouldn't necessarily know from that language alone that this is Charles. People assume it's the Antichrist. They assume it's him if they know that he's the Antichrist. But the technical piece of this is that the heads of those beasts on his coat of arms, the beasts of feet like a bear, body like a leopard, mouth like a lion, the unicorn with human eyes, the red dragon on his coat of arms, the overall helm at the center of the coat of arms that represents the corporate head of that corporate beast. It's viewed as a corporate beast in heraldry. Beneath it is a label with three horns that seem to descend down beneath. That same label called the label of the eldest son is around the neck of the first beast. It's around the neck of the unicorn. It's around the neck of the red dragon. And it's around the neck of the overall corporate beast, the coat of arms beneath that helm. In other words, that corporate beast represents Charles specifically, but each individual beast, the red dragon, the unicorn with human eyes, the beast of feet like a bear, body like a leopard, mouth like a lion, each of those explicitly in heraldry represents him. They each have a head. So there are multiple heads on this coat of arms. That's the reason for the strange language in Revelation 13, where it says one of the heads, plural, will receive this mortal wound. So my point is, Charles hasn't received that wound yet. The first beast has not received that wound yet. It's coming. But nonetheless, for decades, we've been able to prove with hard evidence who the Antichrist is. Now he's ready to take control of a global government that's coming very, very quickly, very soon. So the Antichrist, the foretold Antichrist has the arrows, the rider of the white horse, he's got a bow. A bow, which leads us to think, you know, he's got military weaponry at his disposal to include arrows. He receives a victor's crown. Scripture says he goes forth victorious and to be victorious or conquering and to conquer. The literal meaning of the Greek text there is victorious and to be victorious. And it actually relates to the goddess of victory in relation to the Roman games. Why is that important? So I'm going to tell you exactly why in a moment. But there's one more component I have to bring out, two more actually, in relation to that verse. There's the white horse, right? 
And then the seal, it's opened and it's introduced with the voice or the sound of thunder. That word thunder, right? So people have looked at Obama and the word Barak, his name, his first name. And they've said that in Hebrew, and some have said in Arabic, but in Hebrew, that the name Barak means lightning. Okay? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Well, Rahm Emanuel was present at, in 2008 at the Democratic National Convention, the 2008 DNC with Obama, with Biden, in Invesco Field in the center of Denver. I was literally working only blocks from there while it occurred. And I physically felt I experienced a change in the Holy Spirit as that event was transpiring. I wasn't paying any attention to the event prior to that. I knew something had happened. You know, something had changed in the spirit with that event. I didn't know what, you know, I knew that the DNC was happening and Obama and Biden were there. That was really all I knew and that Obama was a non-Christian, et cetera. Over that field is a large Arabian or Mustang, Arabian horse or Mustang, a white horse. That white horse statue overlooks the entire interior of the stadium. That horse's name is Thunder. The mascot of the Denver Broncos is an Arabian horse or a Mustang, a white one. Its name is Thunder. And then they've gone through various sequences as horses have died. So Thunder, Thunder 2, et cetera. But Thunder is the name of that Broncos mascot. The mascot was present at the 2008 DNC at this event for Obama and Biden and Rahm Emanuel. I'll talk about Emmanuel in a moment, Rahm Emanuel. The horse overlooking the scoreboard, the statue, not the physical living horse, but the statue is named Thunder. The living horse is named Thunder, both present at the event with Obama, whose name means lightning. Rahm Emanuel, his name Rahm in Hebrew means thunder. So you have lightning and thunder present at that event in addition to the white horse, right? Obama is there. Biden is there. Rahm Emanuel is there. Thunder and lightning. Okay. Hitler, pre-World War, pre War II Germany, had the throne of the devil put in a museum in Berlin. A lot of people don't know this. It's called the Pergamon, the throne from Pergamon in Turkey. And I'm probably pronouncing that incorrectly as well. But you see in Revelation where it talks about Satan's throne being in, being in a specific place, right? That place historically was in Turkey in Pergamus. And we read that in the book of Revelation, literally stated. Pre-World War I, Germany actually took that throne, the same one, from Pergamos in Turkey, they put it in a museum in Berlin, and they reconstructed the buildings that would have been around it historically at Pergamos, around that throne, and it's in a museum in Berlin, Germany. It was there before World War I, Satan's throne. Where was World War I fomented from? Germany. Where was World War II fomented from? Germany. What did Obama do in connection with traveling the world to speak? for his campaign in 2008, besides the horse and so forth being there at the DNC, he spoke in Germany beneath a statue called Victoria, the goddess of victory, holding in one hand a wreath, a victor's wreath. The exact same one I'm talking about for, for victors of the game. The statue is after the goddess Victoria in pagan mythology, named Victory or Victoria. And guess what? That statue is very close to the Berlin Museum where Satan's throne is. Obama, after that, was hailed as bringing peace to the world, even though he'd done nothing. And the Nobel Peace Committee gave him the Nobel Peace Prize, even though he'd done nothing to bring peace to the world or anything else. He was just tickling the ears of the Europeans and the West, telling them things they wanted to hear, these so-called liberal, quote-unquote liberal Europeans, right? And the voters in the United States who voted for him, tickling their ears. He'd done nothing, but somehow he's a victor. He hadn't even won the election yet, and somehow he's a victor, and they want to give him the Nobel Peace Prize, and he's standing beneath that statue, which is holding the wreath in her hand, and later he is given the Nobel Peace Prize, and you know it is associated historically with the symbol of that wreath, and then he does win the election, right? So he has victory in the election. Well, there's more to it. So the, the Pergamon throne and its buildings there in Berlin, what did the Democratic National Convention do? They built a mock-up of it right in the center of Invesco Field. And that is what was used for Obama's 2008 DNC with Biden. Not only that, Hitler built a mock-up of it too. 
And I showed Hitler's version. That's where Hitler and all the main Nazi rallies actually occurred throughout World War II. Hitler built a mock-up of that whole, of the buildings and the throne. And that's where the main Nazi rallies were held and where Hitler would constantly speak throughout World War II. Hitler had done it. And now you've got Obama and Biden doing it too. And the DNC beneath the white horse, whose name is Thunder, with the mascot present as Thunder, they're victorious. They win the election. Obama has a bow, the U.S. arsenal, right? Even though Charles is the Antichrist, somehow has the arrows. He'll be in control of those later uh, in some fashion. And, and actually, he's in control of our government behind the scenes anyway. And I can get into that another time or maybe later. But through the World Economic Forum and other entities, he has penetrated our government as he has penetrated Canada's and Australia's and New Zealand's and many others around the world, China's. Russia's all penetrated by the World Economic Forum. So even Obama is doing all this stuff under the British monarchy, under Charles. And I want to make that clear. And I did in my presentation Sunday before last. He's a junior antichrist under the person who is to be the antichrist over a global government. So that being said, Obama's got the sound of thunder. He had the bow. I'm going to talk about how he still has it. He did have it between 2008 and 2016 when he was president in office. He gained the victory, right? He received the crown, the Stephanus. He portrayed himself under the imagery of the goddess of victory, right outside the museum with the Pergamum throne, photographed that way, holding the wreath in her hand. And then there's something more. And that more is this. Um, Obama in his third, he can't have a third term legally, right? After his second term, had to leave office. Obama is on record publicly in video, recorded in an interview, which people can pull up on the internet, stating that he wishes he could have a third term. And if he could have a third term, he would do it vicariously even through the person who was elected president or became president. He would run the show, Obama would, behind the scenes as the actual president and have a third term vicariously. Well, it's exactly what we have with Biden. People look at Biden and all of his gaffes and the fact that he doesn't seem to be all there often enough. Right. Someone's pulling his say, strings. How could, yeah. How could right. this Someone's guy... pulling his strings. But wait, let me just get back to this with yep. Obama. So you're saying that he's the, four, uh, the first horseman. I'm saying the evidence says that. Right. And, I and where is that scripture I wouldn't, say, I wouldn't say 100% on it like I would with Charles because right. it's not that level of evidence. It's not at the point where you can say it's mathematically impossible or there are a dozen other things that he fulfills that no one else has ever fulfilled that are very unique that you can say with Charles. Okay. It's not on that level. That's a whole different category. So having said that, let's move on to the other objections regarding Charles, but I want to acknowledge those people who say that Obama is the antichrist. He isn't the antichrist will be over a global government. That is provably Charles scripturally. There can be a very good case made, however, that Obama is an antichrist and could in fact be the writer of the first horse of the apocalypse as the first horseman, I myself have been making that case since 2010 publicly. I haven't published it. I have made it. It's recorded. Someday I'll share the recording. I will be publishing it probably about the same time that I start to share the recordings, the earlier ones on that from back in 2010. What you just watched is only a glimpse of the eye-opening information Tim reveals in the full video. If you're ready to hear even more proof exposing King Charles as the foretold Antichrist, click the video on the screen and I'll see you there.